Idi Amin was never just along for the ride when it came to sports. He always wanted to pack a punch both as a national heavyweight boxer and head of state. Under Amin, the Cranes qualified for three AFCON finals in 1974, 1976 and 1978. In doing so, he eclipsed the two AFCON finals appearances mustered under the presidency of Milton Obote in 1962 and 1968. When Amin took over the presidency through a military coup that deposed Obote in 1972, Bukhad Pup was in the autumn of his career as Crane's coach. Amin, nevertheless, took to Pup like a duck to water. Although he was the Crane's coach, Pup took it upon himself to work with the army side Simba FC during its fairy tale run to the 1972 Africa Club Championship final. Despite Simba losing to Guinea's half-year Conakry in the final of what is now known as the CAF Champions League, Pap's contribution could not be understated. The Germans' record with the Cranes was just as estimable. He won 41, drew 16, and lost 13 of his 70 Cranes matches. Well, I was a young man when Pap was the coach of the national team. But that national team also was a pride to watch. It was uh, a very good side. And, well, being a, a German man, um, I mean, we have a belief that when you have the white coaches, then things can work out better. But Pep, I think, did something because our role models, what we call our role models, the former players or the players, were a product of the coach Pep's what? time. Pap is widely acknowledged for laying the foundation on which Uganda built its footballing feats in the 1970s. Before Pap took on the Cranes coaching reins in 1968, Englishman Alan Rogers had become the first white to take a place in Uganda's dugout during the post-independence era. While Pap is held in high regard, his compatriot Otto Westerhoff who handled the cranes from 1974 to 1975, did not command much respect despite taking Uganda to the 1974 AFCON finals. The cranes beat Algeria 3-2 on aggregate to make it to the continental showpiece in Egypt. What came when uh, many of these uh, older players were leaving, the Polo Umas, the, the Otis, when they, they had, the Sam had already left, he came, because I remember he came in 74, we had gone to play a friendly match in, the, in the Zanzibar. He came, but he, these very, very, the old players, were, many of them had resigned. Otto, I saw Otto, but I don't think Otto contributed anything. Otto was an old, very old man, very funny. I, I, I used to see him, because that time, I think I was in the national youth team. Robert Chiveru delivered a brilliant advert for indigenous coaches when he took Uganda to the 1968 AFCON finals. Not many indigenous coaches have come close to replicating Chiveru's landmark feat. Paul Hasule fancied himself to do so in 2003, but FUFA sent him on gardening leave before curiously handing the crane's reins to Pedro Pasquale. The Argentine may have played alongside the great Diego Maradona in the 1986 FIFA World Cup, but his short-lived spell as Crane's coach was a disaster. Unlike Pasquale, Chapel Laszlo and Bobby Williamson stayed the course in Uganda. Williamson was the most successful of the two, winning a string of Sekafa Senior Challenge Cup titles. The squad almost took Uganda to the AFCON finals of 2012 and 2013. If Milutin Micho Sridojevic guides Uganda to victory over Comoros tomorrow, his place among Ugandan football's pantheon will be assured. The sub is the seventh white to handle the cranes. The Mandela National Stadium will become the proverbial seventh heaven if Micho becomes the second white to take Uganda to the promised land. Robert Madoy, NTV Weekend Sports.